Hello there, it is Jo from Minerva and today we're going to do a little tutorial on how to apply Peter Pan collars. A Peter Pan collar can be a really tiny feature or a wider collar feature depending on the shape of your original neckline. Today I'm using a pattern that has a Peter Pan collar on it ordinarily but I'm also going to show you how to draft a Peter Pan collar if you want to put one on a different pattern. The pattern that I'm using today is the Sudley Dress and Blouse. It is um, a top that has a Peter Pan collar drafted within the pattern. You can wear it both ways round. You can have the Peter Pan collar at the front and the keyhole and tie at the back or you can switch the blouse around and have the keyhole feature here with a tie front and omit the collar altogether. There are two versions of the top. There is um, a longer top with elbow length sleeves or a cropped top with short sleeves and you can also turn this into a dress with an elasticated cuff. It's really easy uh, breezy style dress with quite an easy fit along the waist so it's quite good if you're not sure of your sizing. Because the top and the dress don't have darts here then if you need a full bust adjustment you will need to do that on this non-darted bodice otherwise you might find that it's pulling down from here. Same if you need a small bust adjustment because you haven't got darts to make that fitting. The fabric that I'm using for this project is a viscose. This is a really nice rich navy colour. I think sometimes it's important to remember to make solid colour items for your wardrobe, not always be making something with a print. It's got an element of stretch on the cross grain and a little bit in the straight grain. So again, without having darts, this is a really great fabric because it's just going to give you a little bit more movement across the chest. I'm going to show you how to put the collar on here. So I've already got to the shoulder stage. <clears throat> My ties are in place, but now I'm going to work on the neckline. Today I am wearing a vintage pattern. This is a 1960s shift dress that had a Peter Pan collar um, as part of the pattern. I've added a little extra piping to that collar detail, which is um, something you can try. And you can also add rickrack in there to get little bumps that stick out or you can add lace trim so you can really elevate the colours that you choose once you've drafted your little collar pieces. This fabric is from Art Gallery, it's a cotton poplin which is great for shift dresses, it's got a little bit of structure, it doesn't cling, um, our Minerva exclusive sateen will act in the same way. The collar has two pattern paper pieces, there is the collar and an under collar. The under collar pieces are slightly smaller than the collar so that the lined part of the collar rolls to the back of the collar on that edge. You don't want to see the under collar peeping out um, and being seen from the right side. So the under collar remains as two cut pieces and the collar needs to be interfaced. So because I'm using a really light viscose, a sort of drapey viscose, then I've just used a super light interfacing. I don't want this to be really stiff because I don't want the collar to sort of stick out. I need it just to be enough to hold the weight of two layers of fabric. You can probably see it, but I am adding a rickrack detail to this collar as well. So you can either ignore that while I'm constructing or you can take it as a bit of inspiration and have a go yourself. The seam allowances for all the collar pieces and construction on this pattern is a quarter of an inch which is very small so we'll be sewing very um, close to the edge of the collar. On other patterns you might find that collars have a smaller seam allowance than the rest of your construction so if you're using 1.5 centimeters for your side seams for example just check your collar um, construction might be at one centimetre say so just in it will be somewhere in your pattern it won't be missed out so just try and find out what that is okay so we're going to put these two collar pieces together because the seam allowance is so small I'm not going to clip these notches I'm going to mark them and these indicate the position of the collar on the shoulder point if I clip, then I might um, weaken the edge of my collar. Pin the collars together. You need to be really accurate here because you've only got a small seam allowance. So make sure you've matched up the raw edges. It's good to do each 
curved edge first and then any slack you can ease into the back of the collar. I've got a quarter inch quilting foot which is going to help me. It will keep my seam allowance really accurate so I get equal curves on each side. Once you've sewn around, you need to find a way to finish the edge that doesn't create bulk. And the best way on a curved collar is to use pinking shears because the, the little shape that you create with pinking shears is like making lots and lots of tiny clips. So it's nice and pliable on the curve. So finish off the edge of your collar and then turn it the right way out. When you turn your collar out to the right side, the under collar should stay on the underside and not be seen. Obviously I've got this rickrack detail so that is keeping the under collar on the wrong side. And you need to lightly steam your collar. If you press it sometimes you'll get a sort of ridge of the seam allowance around here but it depends what fabric you've got. I've got quite a light fabric so I'm going to steam my collar. I might even use my clapper just to lightly press this down. Once you've constructed your collars you've got your under collar and your upper collar then we're going to look at the placement around the neckline. So this is specific to the Sudley blouse, but also if you're making your own uh, Peter Pan collar to add to any other pattern. It's really um, crucial really as part of your general dressmaking to be pressing your seams as you go. If you haven't pressed this shoulder seam and it's a little bit puckered, then you'll have lost a millimetre or so here, maybe here as well, and then your collars won't fit. So everything needs to be pressed nice and flat so that you're applying the collars um, to flat sections of fabric. On the Sudley blouse I just need to make sure that I have the ties um, which are basted on pointing out of the way and I've got my little mark there which is the notch mark and that's to apply to the shoulder seam. Start at the shoulder notch and then make sure that you're being particularly accurate at the centre front. At the back the collar needs to be 0.6 millimetres or a quarter of an inch from the end because we're still using that quarter of an inch seam allowance when we apply the collar in this instance so you can check your seam allowance and then you can ease the collar into the neckline and your collar front here needs to meet the centre front. Often collars do need to be eased in, they need that extra little bit of fabric to roll over for the circumference. So keep putting your collars on. Continue to pin, use as many pins as you need to ease in the fabric and keep those raw edges even. I'm just keeping my ties out of the way because I don't want to sew them so I'm folding them so they're nice and lumpy and then I'll feel them when I'm sewing. We want to secure this um, collar now in place so we're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance so again I'm going to st stick with my quarter inch foot and make sure all the raw edges are lined up because with a quarter inch seam allowance I haven't really got room for that little misalignment there and this needs to be accurate because how you finish a Peter Pan collar whether you draft one yourself or you're following this pattern is to put a piece of bias binding and over the top and you don't have a lot of room for manoeuvre on your bias binding. You need to cut your bias so that it's got that element of stretch because you're going round a curve. It's just a single fold binding and we're going to lie that on top and line up all of those raw edges. 
pay particular attention here to that centre front. You want it to be really neat and lie on that stronger curve. Continue to pin. Once it's on, it's good to press everything down so that everything's lying really nice and flat. So you're pressing that to the wrong side. Then fold under the edge of the binding so that it covers over the collar seam. Pin that in place. Keep everything nice and flat and the width of your binding even. Take special care if you're making the Sudley to not include the ties. From the inside, the binding will lie flat and your stitch line will be underneath, hidden underneath the collar. I found it particularly uh, useful to tack this down so that I could make a really accurate seam line. It just meant that I could really manipulate the fabric on the curve under the sewing machine foot. So we've got it meeting in the middle here. We haven't got any puckers or rolls around that collar line. It's not been pressed yet. And that binding inside, it doesn't pinch together the seam allowance. It acts as a style of facing. So that will need pressing out too. I'll put it up on the mannequin so that we can have a look at how it's lying and falling. Okay, here's the collar. So it's lying where the rick rack is meeting exactly in the middle, but if you haven't used that, then you'll be wanting your collar tips there not to have a gap in the middle. You've got that. You don't want it to be too short in the circumference there because then it will lift up. I've got rick rack again, so you can't see the edge of the collar, but you need to know that your under collar is under here and the top collar just shows a straight line. I've got the keyhole detail here to finish, but this just shows you that you can wear the Sudley top this way round, or this way round, or you can have it without the Peter Pan collar altogether. So it's a really nice finish. If you want to have a go at putting a Peter Pan collar on a garment of your own, I'll show you how to pattern draft a piece, but that's the technique. You keep the collar layers together, you attach them to the neck, edge and then you can use a piece of binding that acts as a facing. Okay here's the blouse finished with this beautiful collar. I did um, put the rip rack on this one. You could pipe it if you wanted to or you could just have a smooth edge. It's a really nice top. This is the Sudley top. No darts. I cut a size 14. I use the shorter sleeve. There is a sleeve that comes down to here and there is a version that is cropped. I've made mine um, looser fitting so I can tuck it in or have it out. And I might also add a little bit of rip wrap detail around the edge here so I get a harmonious sort of little dimple edge here and along the sleeve. Okay, let's head over to the cutting table and I'll show you a few tips for drafting your own collar and putting that onto a pattern that doesn't have one. You can use the techniques that I've just shown you to apply a collar um, and you can make sure that you're getting the seam allowances correct and everything's sitting nicely. Drafting your own collar is suitable for dresses. So this one has a scoop neck. This is the cashmere Montrose top. This has a little split at the back. So that means um, you can make sure that your collar goes 
to that back neck split. You could add it to the Stevie dress to give it more interest. Or you could, if you've made the Lyra dress and enjoyed making it, you could round off the collars. So that's more of a hack of a collar that already exists. So you won't need to draft that to the neckline from scratch. You can just round out the collars if you want to change the collar shape. I'm using the Grain Range Studio Scout T as my base today because it's just got a simple round neck and I want to show you the measurements. First of all, you need to mark the seam allowances on the pattern because we're going to be measuring the neckline, but we need to make allowances for that. On the Scout T, it's half an inch or 1.3 centimetres. So we're going to be measuring from the seam allowance to the front fold. Once you've put the seam allowances on, um, it's a good idea to mimic this neck shape by putting your seam allowances together. And we're just going to do that temporarily so that we overlap the seam allowance. And if you're making a collar, sometimes um, if it doesn't have enough room to roll, because it's a flat roll collar, on your shoulder seam here, your collar can sort of kick up. Um, so I'm going to join that there, just with some temporary tape, but I'm not going to join that seam line. I'm just going to kick it out a little bit. So that's giving me the shape that I want to trace. I'm going to put a piece of paper under there so that I can draw out this neckline shape. We're going to put a piece of paper underneath so that we can draw our neckline. The first thing to mark out is the shoulder point. And then follow the shape of the neck. With all pattern drafting, it's best to use a sharp pencil, but I'm just using a Sharpie because you'll be able to see what I'm doing more clearly. And you will need to know which is the front and the back so that you know which one you're going to put your curved shape on. So this is the back and this is the front. You might need to be mindful of how wide your shoulder is as well because you don't want your collar to go past your shoulder. But I'm going to do a collar that is around three inches or eight centimetres long. So that's not going to reach past my shoulder. Because this is a flat roll collar, then we want to make sure that our collar will accommodate some of the fabric in the neckline and roll over. So before I draft the collar shapes, I'm just going to take three millimetres, an eighth of an inch off each end so that my collar is a little bit shorter than the circumference that it's going into. I want the fabric to ease into the collar and the collar to be tight enough to roll over. Next, I want to make a second arc showing the depth of my collar. I'm going to go for eight centimetres. And now you really have a choice of what shape you would like to make your collar. So because I am putting my collar onto a top that doesn't have a slash at the back, then the back of my collar will be on the fold. So I don't need to do anything to that end because that's just going to be the continuous back. 
the front I'm going to shape and you can shape that whatever shape you want to so at this point you could make it um, straight if you want you can curve it out gently you can make quite a petal curve like a sort of 1970s color petal curve it's up to you now what shape you would like you could try cutting it out of a piece of paper and holding it up to you so that you can see how deep you want it how and how curved you want it this is one half of your collar so whatever you draw here when you cut out your fabric it will be symmetrical anyway so you haven't got to try and get two collar ends to look the same you've got to draw one so let's uh, freehand have a little think about what shape we would like it to be and then we can use our french curve to find the curve so a french curve doesn't have the curve you want straight away you're doing a sort of best fit match but you could use the very tip of it if you wanted to and use that curve and this is your collar shape because I didn't use a sloper at the start, because I used a pattern piece that had the seam allowances, then this has already got its seam allowance included here. If you want to add some to this outer edge, you can as well. So um, make sure that what you cut out is what you think you're going to get at the end. Do you need to add a seam allowance to that? Or are you happy that once the seam allowance is taken off, then your collar is big enough? I'm going to cut this out and then we can take a look at making an under collar to match it. So this is our upper collar. An upper collar grain line. Runs straight. So my ruler was on 23 centimetres here and 23 centimetres here and my paper is parallel with this line here 11 centimeters and 11 centimeters so as long as your paper is square and your ruler is square then you'll be catching the gray line you will need to cut one on the fold that will give you your outer collar this is the one that you will interface plus one in interfacing so you've got all the details you need and this here is your shoulder notch and here is the fold if you feel you do want to add a seam allowance to here because by the time that you've sewn it it won't be big enough then you can use um, a, a mouse wheel or a prim wheel and then you can add your seam allowance. So I'm going to put it at 1.5, mark the paper. And I can cut along that line and that will be my eight centimeter collar plus 1.5 centimeters for turning the collar. If you want to make your seam allowance smaller, so you only want a one centimeter seam allowance there, it's your choice because it's your collar. Of course, this collar isn't for everything. This is for the Scout T. So I can make sure that I put that into the packet for if I want to use it in the future. Okay, let's take a look at making an under collar. You need to trace off the collar. I will need to use a pencil here, otherwise I really am going to be very inaccurate with a felt pen. You still need that notch. And because we want the under collar to roll under on this outer edge, then we're going to take a little bit off. It's a little bit tedious, but you're going to take three mil off all the way around the collar edge you don't take any off from the inside because um, you'll need that to attach it to your neck edge you don't need to add anything here because this is the folded edge you just need to take a little 
sliver off around this outer edge so that the under collar rolls under the upper collar. So this is our Scout T under collar. Cut one on fold and you still need that shoulder notch there. This is your collar set and you can test it along this edge and you can see we took those little bits off the front and the back so that the collar would be nice and firm and roll over. If you're finding that taking those little bits off the end is not helping your collar to lie flat then don't do it. Sometimes in, in floppy fabrics that works but if it's a firmer fabric sometimes leaving those extra bits on helps. So it's your chance now to cut a pair of collars out and when you've made your top is to try them inside. If you have a top that has a split down the back then you will need to um, round off the back edge of your collar as well. This one happens to be on the fold so you can have split collars like I had on the Sudley top where um, there's curves on the front and there's curves on the back. But that is how you make and draft your own collars. You can only do this with a flat roll collar. Um, if you try to draft a different style of collar, a pointed shirt collar, you will need a collar stand or something that holds the collar up. So this style of drafting is for a flat roll collar. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and it might inspire you to use a Peter Pan collar feature. Um, large collars have been quite a feature in uh, dress trends of late, but you can change that up so you can make your Peter Pan collar quite small, you can make it quite wide, or you can make a deeper version. You can try all of those out on a twirl. You don't need a specific pattern just to get the collar. Hopefully it opens up a world of using your patterns that you've got at home and hacking and drafting the extra bits that you want. We would love to see what you have been making, so do make a free account over at Minerva. You can upload your makes, share pictures of what you've been doing and take a look at other Minerva makers. It's a really inspirational place to find out what you would like to choose for your next sewing project. Thank you very much for watching. Do call again soon.